Warning, Neo detected. Warning, Neo detected. In this video I wanted to go through and show you how I made this Disney Pixar style fight scene going through the characters, the buildings, the compositing and all of that. Uh, the video did come out a little bit longer than I was expecting so I'll have plenty of timestamps all throughout the video so you can just skip around to whatever part you want to look at first. But yeah, I started off by making a lot of sort of test shots to sort of see if it would work out the sort of energy I wanted to show in the animation. And those came in really handy when it came to actually animating and getting the look of the video. I ended up making the robot like four or five times, so this isn't like my first attempt or anything, but I did notice something along the way of making it, that like, in the movie when his head does switch around, um, it sinks in a little bit to sort of show a little bit more of like a mechanical feel, I guess. Um, to sort of portray that a little bit more, I sort of made this weird head shape that would catch the light and make it a little bit more interesting when it does flip around, even if it's only for a couple frames. The animation of the face swapping around was actually pretty simple. All I did was use location and rotation keyframes individually, not the combined ones. So I would have the head dip down, rotate, and then come back up. For the arms, legs, and ears, it was pretty simple because they're all the same shape. So all I did was use a half sphere, a six-sided cylinder, and then copied that same sphere for the end cap. And then I sort of joined them all together, beveled the edges of the cylinder so it would catch the light, and then changed the origin point to the center of the head so that when I moved it around, it would pivot around the head, making the animation a little bit easier. So for the body shape, I didn't actually want to use the sphere primitive because when I've subdivided that in the past I've gotten weird artifacts and with the UV unwrap it's not a very clean one especially with all the triangles at the ends and obviously this is a weird way that I've unwrapped it but you can see it's still really distorted as opposed to what I chose to do which is using a cube and then subdividing that applying that and then sort of marking the seams as if it was like a tennis ball because when you unwrap that you get two really clean UV islands that are really easy to work with but as you can see, even though it's subdivided a lot, it's still pretty square. So what I did was I just enlarged it a little bit, then added a cloth simulation, turned the gravity off, increased the quality steps, and then went down to the pressure settings and enabled that and then turned the pressure scale up just a little bit, just enough to puff it up into like a perfect sphere when you hit play. And then when you apply the cloth simulation, you're left with a perfect sphere with awesome UVs and it's super easy to work with. So after making that initial sphere, I copied that for the rest of the body, um, copied the arms and legs and ears, put them all in the right spot, and then before sending it off to Substance Painter, I sort of separated it so I wouldn't get any issues when I was baking it in there. And then I moved over to texturing, so I just added metal textures and dings and scratches and fingerprints and grime, and just all that sort of stuff to make it look realistic and sort of fit the aesthetic of like a Disney movie. I tried really hard to sort of generate the paint look on the face, um, but I just could not figure it out. So I just ended up adding a paint layer and drawing it by hand. And then I moved on to the rigging stage. So I just sort of placed him in a neutral pose uh, so I could lay out the bones for him. Um, I am not a rigging expert by any means and I tried really hard to sort of make the easiest rig that I could. I tried using some empties to sort of tie it all together instead of using bones because, again, I'm not super fluent in that, but I ended up just making a super basic skeleton for him um, with some IK rigging for the legs, just using simple IK constraints. And you can see me testing it out there just to make sure it worked. The IK constraints really made the foot placement a lot easier than I was expecting it to. It just ended up saving me a lot of time throughout the whole process. And with the main character out of the way, it was time to start building an environment for him to fight in.
So I started off with just a ground plane and made that the size that I needed it to be and then sort of added in some basic shapes to sort of lay out the buildings, just blocking out the scene. And then went through and just changed the shapes of those buildings, making them a little bit more what I would like them to be as the final result. I had a pretty rough idea of what I wanted to make based off the scene in the actual movie. It's sort of like a back alley type deal. I knew I wanted to have like a garage and a brick wall. I wanted to put some graffiti on there. I ended up making like the back of a shop and sort of just like a dividing wall with another building on the outside of that. Then I made separate blend files for each of the buildings, so I just in I just appended the actual base shape that I had made in the block out, um, and then just sort of extrapolated on that, adding extra details, adding extra doors, windows, pipes, a lot of pipes. Halfway through, I thought it was a good idea to add a human for scale, especially for the doors and stuff like that. It was easy for the garage because it's just for cars to come in and out, but like. When I was making the door for the back of the building, I sort of had a hard time deciding how big to make it, so I just decided to import a human model and then just sort of base my scale off that. So I wanted to have the door inset in the building, um, but I didn't want to add a bunch of loops around the building to sort of cut that shape in. So I ended up making a sort of Boolean bounding box for the door. Um, it's super easy and like something that helps out a lot, especially when you want to cut in that sort of shape into a building or wall for a door. All you need to do is just add a cube the size of your door, a little bit bigger, um, and then go to the viewport display. Change the viewport display to wireframe and then display as bounds. And then you can parent your door object to the bounding box and then set a boolean on the main building or wall. And then when you move your bounding box into the shape, it'll cut away a perfect spot for your door or window. So I just kept working the buildings until they looked right. Um, and then I just started adding all the extra little things like the pipes and the gutters and stuff like that. And if you looked at my last tutorial, it's exactly the same way I did the handles and the cable for the Borderlands chest. I had heaps of reference images up of buildings and stuff like that, but I was just trying to flesh it out as much as I could with as much little like details like electrical boxes, air conditioning units and stuff like that. There is actually a part on the electrical box on the left that I forgot to texture and if you have a look in the video it's just white the whole time, I forgot about that bit. I also just wanted to show how I got that great look on the um, front of the air conditioning unit. All I did was get a plane, loop cut it a bunch, and then if you hit F3 and type poke faces with all the faces selected, it'll insert a vertice in the center of each square. Um, and then you can either use the wireframe modifier or if you hit I and you insert the faces, you can just do that and then delete the faces, then you'll just get a completely flat, sort of great look. I wanted to go through how I textured these buildings because I wanted them to use only one texture file. And because the texture files were so big, I didn't want to put all that extra stress of loading in all those high resolution textures and have my computer crash. So in Substance Painter, after I've baked the maps, I'll create individual folders for each texture that I wanted to do. So, so this one ended up having around eight separate folders. Um, it looks a little bit chaotic at the start when it's all different colors, but it really does help to sort of organize everything. So on each folder I'm having a mask and I'm individually masking off each object so that whatever's inside that folder is only texturing the faces that I've selected. It's a little bit extra work at the start, but it really makes the whole process a lot quicker. So then I go through the whole texturing process again, just adding all the dirt and grime and textures and just making it look as realistic as I can. Um, these are all 4K textures, I think. So some of them, especially on like the sign and stuff like that, can be a little bit low resolution, but if you see the video, everything's so out of focus, it doesn't really matter anyway. <laughs> I then wanted to add some like extra little elements in the scene, so I just made a trash can to sit in the corner just to sort of fill space. I was initially going to have the texture of like the outside of it with the bumps and stuff like that in the geometry, but I wanted to try and do that in Substance Painter. I just used a bump map to sort of get that ridges on the outside um, when I was texturing it. And now that I had the environment done, I just needed to make something for him to beat up. Making the little punching bag for him to beat up was pretty easy. All I did was just make a pretty simple potato looking shape. Uh, gave him some button eyes. I had like a rough idea in the story of like how I wanted him to fight, having like ripping off the eye and stuff like that. I made sure to model them all separately, um, have them all be separate objects just parented together. I did add a very simple armature to the punching bag just so he could move around when he did get hit also so I could animate a little bit of life into him, like when he's reaching out for the eye um, and falling back down, just to sort of give him a little bit more character. 
there is a scene that I added a little bit later in the actual making of the video where he's opening the controller to sort of control the robot and activate him. So for that I just really roughly modeled a controller because you're only going to see it for a couple seconds. So I just super quickly smashed out a controller shape with the animation and then sort of parented that to the hands of the guy controlling the robot. I wanted to show a little bit of the animation. Um, I didn't record a whole bunch of it just because I was so focused on getting it to look good. But as you can see, it's pretty chaotic with everything going on. I should have had a more solid plan when I started the animation. I was just sort of winging it scene by scene and then changing things when I made decisions later on. I definitely would have saved a lot more time by creating a proper storyboard and it's definitely something that I'm gonna be prioritizing on future projects. And for the final compositing, I did something kind of weird where I didn't have the denoiser turned on, I instead had it turned on as a render layer so that when I went to composite, so I could separate the noisy data and denoise it myself. But what I decided to do was add my effects like glare and lens distortion before I actually denoised it. It's a slight difference but it sort of added a little bit more texture to the actual final image, which I kind of liked, so I kept it. And yeah, that's pretty much everything that I did for this whole video. I just want to say thank you to everyone who watched my last video. Uh, it was like super positive feedback on that, which is dope. So I thought I'd put a little bit extra effort into making a super cool animation. Hopefully I didn't go through it too quickly, but yeah, I've got another project that I've just started, which is going to be cool, which is that sort of anime matrix style that I did a while ago because I've seen a lot of people sort of interact with that. Um, so yeah, hopefully it won't take me too long, but yeah, bye.